so let's have a look. OK, so uh, for everybody who doesn't know me, I'm Tim, I'm the CEO of the company. And today we're going to talk about the MetaMount. This is this little unit. And the MetaMount is an E2PL mount adapter with built-in electronics. If we are looking at the unit, let's have a look if we can get a little bit more detailed view on that. If we are looking at the unit, you see um, up here in the front, we have the electronics for the PL mount. Here in the back, we do have the um, E mount side with built in electronics. And then on the side, we do have the Hyrosi 12 pin connector for ENG connection. And then down here, the 5 pin LEMO is for power in and the reason why we have a five pin connector in there is because it not only takes power in, but at the same time it gives run stop commands out for the camera. And we will address that later on too. <clears throat> Just for it uh, for your information, the unit right now is in a shiny silver, like full metal. Um, we already have received some feedback where they are um, saying that the metal kind of, they are worried about the shiny version of it. So we will make this um, uh, in a black housing, at least the barrel of it. Inside the box, there is even more. We have included two kind of cables. So with that cable, we have one cable that's the standard DTAP power cable to get um, normal DTAP power in. Our unit accepts 12 to 18 volts, so this should be fine for all the units. And then included in the package is the Hyrosi 4-pin cable with the 5-pin LEMO. This is for the whole Sony world, like the Sony XTCA gives out a Hyrosi 4-pin power and start-stop command for getting that back in. And it has that um, on some of the Sony batteries to power and have um, power out for the camera and for a different connector like the Hyrosi 4-pin. Additionally, we have the um, adapter from USB um, to micro USB, and this is for our unit. We do have an update port. So the USB port, which is covered here, is only for updating the unit. So it's not meant to power any of your USB devices. So it's in the fields. Um, you can get a new firmware from our side, and um, you have a little um, pinhole here on the side. You press that in, give power to it. And this way, as soon as you do that at the same time, um, the unit goes into programming mode and it takes about 10 to 20 seconds to update the unit for latest firmware um, because we will release more and more functionality one after one. The unit itself, you see here is a little bit of a um, spacing in between, is shimmable. So when you want to shim the unit, you take that off and then inside the kit, you have a full set of shims included to shim it to your camera. The Sony E-mount has different um, flange depths depending on the camera size. And we believe to make it perfectly precise for PL mount lenses, we included the shimmable option. This way you don't have to shim your lenses to your camera you sh shim your camera to the lens, and this way your whole lens inventory can stay um, perfectly collimated, and you simply shim your camera with that mount um, to that. This all is inside the package. Let's jump in right away for um, functionality. I would suggest we have a look at the Sony FX9 camera first, and then later on, um, we can have a look at the FX3. But um, for now, I would suggest we start with the FX9. So let's build this up. Um, what we will do is um, the uh, Sony FX9 is positive locking. So we simply place it into the unit and then lock it. And actually, we can have a look a little bit more detailed onto that here. 
So it's simply put it on there and then lock it and we have it here in place. Maybe I can put it a little bit nicer like this. And we are nearly ready for that. You see down here, we have a 3-8 threading um, for supporting it. So simply move your support down to it and then drill it in. And lock it and this way we have a nice stable connection for supporting the E-mount. We are nearly ready to go. Um, what we would like to do is now we need to power the unit. So here on the camera, I have in the back a DTAP uh, switch battery with a DTAP power out connector. So what I do is I put power cable into the back of here, run it on the top, and then Let's go down and let's put real quick more details to it. So this way you see down here, you simply connect the connector into it and you're ready to go. So let's have a first look at it. What we do is we use a size supreme lens. This is a good example for Cook Eye data and the size extended data. And we put it in, lock it, and we are ready to go. I connected the camera to the um, HDMI connection, so this way I can show you what the lens is seeing, and you see a little bit on the background of our showroom, so who has never been here. Um, unfortunately, it's a 50 mil lens. You don't see that much about it, but it gives you an idea at least. So what you see is up on the top, you see the um, the um, focus distance in meter right now. And if I change my focus, you see the white barrel, for example, move left and right. And at the same time, you see the depth of field change. So depending on the meter or on the iris setting, the depth of field is displayed um, in the white bar on the top. On the bottom, you see the f-stop. So if, for example, now it's a nine. On the left side, so you see the distance and the focal length, in this case, the 50. Now, if you want to switch from metric to feet, what you do is you go into the menu and it's a simple setting inside the menu. Um, what was it? I'm always, Let's see if it was here. There it is. So um, down here you see distance display and as soon as I switch to feet and then go out, you see now it has switched to feet and all the values are displayed. So independent of the lens or the, the barrels or the markings of the lens, you will see um, the details um, which you selected in the camera. This is basically it about metadata ingestion. Um, you can use Cook Eye data, um, you can use size extended data, RE LDS2 data, and for the RE LDS1, that's something we will be working on. Um, but right now, you have um, all Cook Eye data lenses working. Any questions regarding metadata? There's a question, let's see. Well, um, there are various requests right now for different mount adapters, John. So John is asking for if we're gonna do something for the Nikon Z or Leica Sigma Pana L mount. Um, yes, we will for sure address that, um, but one after one. So we are releasing or shipping that unit first. And then when we are ready for that. We will for sure look at a PL and LPL version first and then consider other versions too. Okay, now let's switch to the next fun part um, and have a look at how the system behaves when we are using ENG lenses. So, um, for today, we have a Canon CN lens 
here with us. Um, and I will show you how it works with the Canon CN lens and then um, we'll let you know more details about how it works with the Fujinon Caprio lenses because both of them works really nice. So what we do is we simply connect the lens and then we connect the Hirosi 12 pin connector to the unit. And you see that the um, signal is turning green before there was a red flashing. So now we are connected. And then I can already start zooming in and out. Let me show you how it looks like. So I can zoom in and out. Um, I see the data coming in. So I have the same behavior like I'm used to from the, the system. So what can we do with the overall setup? What we can do is we can switch into um, auto iris mode. So what we do is we go to the selection of manual and automatic, and then I can switch to auto, and this way the lens is controlled automatically. So if I go like this, you see how the lens opens up to f2.7 and then closes automatically down to illuminate it in a perfect way. Additionally, what you can do is you can use the um, hand grip. So you see here the hand grip, I could extend it more to the back and this way I can zoom in and out um, from the hand grip by using the zoom rocker. I can use the zoom rocker here on the top of the camera. And when I switch back to manual iris of the camera, on the hand grip, I can use the, um, the dial to open up and close the iris. If we look at the FX6, the FX6 has on the hand grip the zoom rocker and the dial next to it. So when you want to use it with that, you can even go into low mode and control it in a run and gun situation. And even for here, you can use it in a run and gun situation, have it on your shoulder, zoom with the servo drive, and the iris is automatically controlled by the camera. Another topic what you can do is you can connect. That's a good question about um, the start stop button on the lens if that works. Um, with the Sony XTCA adapter, we will see that later on, it works doing, um, but right now um, you need an, a split cable from us. So one goes into the LAN port and one is the power cable. And this way you can run camera start stop functionality from the uh, VTR button um, into the camera. So we have you covered on this. We are working on the internal communication for that, but that's something Sony has to implement probably on their side too. So we are working on that together with Sony. Now, what I would like to show you is um, the uh, another quite nice functionality. And one second, where's the screen? Just fighting with seeing my video to share the screen with you. Where is it? There it is, now I have it. Okay, so let's share my screen real quick with you. So what we have done is we have put the camera into um, the Wi-Fi network and connected wirelessly to the camera via the um, uh, Wi-Fi router. 
and you see here now I can zoom in remotely through the system. I can um, start stop the camera. I don't have a um, card in there right now, but it said media does not exist right now. And you see here the iris value. If I turn off auto iris to off, then I can go back up and I can control the iris. So now we are opening up to a 7.1 or close to an 8. So I can completely remotely operate the camera. I can even change the focus on the camera remotely. So I have full remote um, functionality from the setup to, um, through the wireless connection. So for one is you have the run and gun situation for auto iris. And then on the second, if you have multicam setups, you have different ways of one setup would be you have the camera in a multicam setup, have one Wi-Fi router, cameras connected, and then you have the, the laptop communicating with the camera or you're using your iPhone or your cell phone with the mobile app. And this way you can connect to the lens at the same time. So I will show you that. So let's see and show you this. With the other camera. Uh, it's not so easy to show, but you see here as soon as I click on zoom as an example, I can zoom in and out while the connector here. I can click on focus and change the focus position. And for iris, I can select the iris, can move it up and down and even select um, the auto iris if I want here. I have manual. I'm not sure if you guys can see it in a clear way, but you could switch to auto and then iris is controlled automatically. So all this is functional be through the app or wire the, um, the web GUI of the camera. Any questions? about this kind of control. OK, so if there are no questions for now, let's continue with another topic. Let's look at the um, Sony XDCA adapter. So let's power down the camera real quick. What we're going to do is we take off um, the battery here in the back and then in our magic um, table we have the Sony XTCA adapter and you simply connect it here in the back screw the batteries onto it uh, the um, screws into the camera um, put power onto the camera put uh, um, Ethernet cable to it. The Ethernet cable is connected to our router. And this way I can connect now, wire the camera and wire the router on, on a wife, uh, Ethernet cable to the camera. What you have to do to get control, um, I think you guys all know about it, but I have to do it anyhow now while I have installed it. I have to go down to the network and then I have to say, wired LAN and say turn on and camera remote control enabled and this way I'm ready to go to control it. So we have a conflict probably with one of the addresses so it's going to be interesting if that works right away but um, let's give it a try. So with the connector now we will not use um, 
a DTAP cable anymore. So we will switch to a HiRosi four pin cable. And the reason why we're gonna do that, um, it's anyhow in the box, but the reason why we're gonna do that is because we want to connect the Sony XDCA camera start stock command um, to the camera. So what we do is we connect here in the back, you have the HiRosi four pin connector to give power out and at the same time to accept camera start stop commands in. And then we give power to the unit down here. There we go. So now we are connected to the camera again um, and um, have the signal going through the HiRosi 12 pin connector. What we can do too is we connect, we can connect through the lens mount to the camera, especially on the Fujinon Caprio, because the servo drive itself usually has no cable with it. So you can power the servo drive through the unit, and I can show you that by connecting the unit here to the front to their input and as soon as i do this i get the control a little bit tricky from the back to show that there we go so as soon as I do that, I have control and I even have on the Canon CN lenses, I do have zoom control wire the buttons and iris control. If we are looking at the Fujinon Caprio lenses, without the cable being connected, it powers the servo drives and controls the iris, but currently does not operate the zoom. So if you want to use the zoom remotely, you will need to have an adapter cable from the Fujinon 20 pin connector, the HiRosi 20 pin to our lens port. And that's a cable we call um, CAP LP FJN HR20. And this is the cable to connect the Fujinon Caprio Zero Drive to our unit if you want to have more than iris control through the mount itself. So let's switch back the system. And now what we can do is, and actually I can show you that in an easy way, is when I connect the, um, if I press the record button down here, do you see that here in the back, the um, VTR button? So as soon as I press that, the camera tells you media not exist. So that's, the proof of concept of that we are able to start stop the camera but unfortunately we don't have um, any um, recording cards in the camera now let's have a look at how it looks like when we have the sony rcp connected so i connect the rcp to the um, um, via the ethernet cable and then um, it starts up. And what I see now is, um, is that I have the values, the iris values are being shown on the camera. So what I could do is I can show you that up here. So down here, you see the iris value and you can control that by going up and down. And if you deactivate the relative buttons, you can fully open up and close the iris with real life values being displayed here. And when you press the auto iris button on the other side, this way the camera behaves in the auto iris way. Any questions in regards to the remote control possibilities you have with the system? Oh, 
Okay, so um, I think those are the most important functions we have seen for the FX9 camera. So we have similar um, operations for the FX3 or FX6 cameras. Um, something really interesting is on the Sony FX3 camera. Um, for one, we can do the metadata ingest. So that's um, an easy thing. And then the other topic would be that we can give, um, that you have auto iris functionality with a zero drive even on an FX3 camera. So we can have a look at that if you prefer, or uh, we can address any other topics meanwhile, um, whatever you, you have in mind. So I think um, for most of the ideas I wanted to talk about today with you guys, I think we address them. Um, so I would suggest we take a couple of minutes to look real quick at the um, FX3 camera to give you an idea about how that would work. So um, let's turn off the camera. And use this in a second. So let's use that as a support in the front because it's a heavy lens. Now, what we do is we simply disassemble this one um, to the camera. So on the FX3, it's not a positive locking um, camera, so you have to turn the mount into the E-mount locking mechanism. And then let's put a power. So for now, what we do is we use an external power source for it, for the mount, and let's mount. So you see the camera gets really small and the lens nicely impressive on the camera. So the interesting um, possibilities you have with this kind of configuration is that you have the um, Netflix approval for the FX3 camera. So if you have an environment where you have very narrow space and you want to use this kind of content um, um, for shooting, for example, for Netflix um, documentation, so that that's quite a neat application you can achieve with it. Okay, so we are connected now. Um, I connect the lens to it, and then let's give it some space. Now, if we are looking at the setup, you can see how we assembled it. And now I can zoom in and out through the lens. And then what I like to show you is with the HDMI out, I would like to show you the functionality of the system. Turning up right now. There we go. So now you see I can zoom in and out and it shows you the um, focal lengths. And if I go into the setup. Okay, that's on video. And now 
Um, with the iris on auto, you can see how the iris opens up and closes down depending on the illumination of the system. Now it has opened up fully to f2.7 and then now I'm giving it more light and it closes back out. So you fully can operate even the FX3 in auto iris mode and it helps you to get the established shot in an easy way, concentrate on the picture, on the framing and um, zooming in, out, pulling focus and the iris can be controlled nicely and perfect from the camera. Um, the same, of course, would work for the um, uh, metadata. So you put the metadata lens on there and it ingests that into the camera. And um, depending on the mode, it can um, control it or not. Okay, guys, any questions on this? Given the difference in is there a sales guide coming for the dealers? Um, yes, for sure. We're gonna into um, have or we need to create something to help you how it works and the functionality about it. We will release a lot of um, short little videos of different applications and how to, how it is being used. Um, and at the same time, we will work on a manual and a FNA or a quick guide to help you support the customer or your interested people and at the same time for building up the system. Then the question is about the Cayman broadcast. Um, I believe you would like to pull the focus and zoom while the Cayman and the iris probably through the system. Um, that would work for sure. So we're giving out the standard um, um, broadcast signals from the lens for Tyrosi 12 pin, but we have not been testing this, so we cannot really give you an advice on if that works perfectly or not, but we are fully on the standard of Tyrosi 12 pin lens port communication, and this means that any kind of broadcast box, even ours, um, we um, plan on will work if the digital protocol is integrated. So our HiRosi 12 pin has the serial communication where we are, which we are using for translating the E-mount to um, HiRosi 12 pin connection, but the analog voltages are not being sent out. Okay, I think that's all the questions we have been able to address. Any other questions right now? So what I would suggest is we stop the recording and then um, if you are interested in um, selling, um, having a chat afterwards, um, that would be nice to join us a little bit longer to um, update each other of what is going on. Before we um, stop the recording, I would really say thank you again to all the manufacturers who have supported us during the development phase and on this webinar. So especially Canon, Zeiss, Sony, and Fujinon. Unfortunately, we didn't have the Fujinon Capulance here today, but um, Fujinon was very supportive uh, from Japan and from Europe. So thank you all for supporting us. And I do know that, for example, Jen from Sony is here with us. So Jen, thank you so much for basically all the gear, FX3, FX6, uh, XTCA. We really um, are very thankful for your support. Thank you, guys. You're very welcome. Thank you. So thank you guys for joining. And um, if you have any questions, um, please uh, feel free to contact us. Um, we have Michael Burnham here in the session, who's our America sales rep. He's based in LA. So he's in the time zone of US. Uh, we have Mark Permin with us here. He's our CSO based here in Munich. And um, he's um, here for you guys too, and of course me from Munich too. Um, if you have questions, please write us an email to info at crozier.com or visit our website, crozier.com. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.